Come out with us and play Love Your London Have a banana Later on in this instalment of Love Your London we will be having a look around Acton Cemetery. Plus we'll be checking out the Team Sport go-kart track on Allied Way. But while we're waiting for the car to be ready, we thought we'd check out Early Press Limited, a family-owned business with over 150 years of experience in the printing industry. Good, we're rolling. Okay, so... You uh, put your mask on? Just so we're showing, because today is the law, right? Yeah. Okay, so we're um, here at the Early Printing Press, which is uh, a place with a lot of history. Guy, would you like to tell us a little bit about um, about the space? Yeah, sure. We took over this business actually last year. We were uh, in Acton. We moved here in 1991, actually. Our family business, uh, myself, my brother and my father. Uh, we, um, we moved, uh, business changed. We took a smaller unit and we had an opportunity. So we basically merged two businesses um, into one. So we have the four blocking and embossing, which uh, the early press is known for. They've been in this area uh, since 1990. Um, and uh, we combine that with uh, digital printing for the fast turnaround uh, as well. Fantastic. So I can show you uh, some of the machines. They're not actually running at the moment, but I can just give you an idea of some of the work that we do and some of the That would be uh, fantastic, work. thank you. Um, so with the foiling, um, there's these lovely old Hardaburg machines. Um, very well used, uh, they're hot foil, so they will operate from a metal block and um, the foil um, goes in front and then the heat transfers the image area onto the paper. So these are usually used to uh, uh, give an additional finish to printed products, the, um, brochure covers, certificates, uh, letterheads, business cards, this type of work. And we have another local business, uh, CBD oil, we're just redoing all of their packaging. So we're going to deboss um, the, uh, a leaf and then we're going to die cut them out. So that's, that's another process. Yeah. Um, so this is uh, going to be a, a, a box for merchandising. Yeah. So again, it's a trade account. So the bigger packaging jobs and folders and things like that uh, would use a larger sheet size. So that's that one. And then in the back room here we have our digital presses, so it's good for short turnarounds, uh, fast work, whether it be a yep. fire action, business card, flyer, labels, posters, anything like that. We would normally be doing a lot of event work, corporate events, Obviously, uh, yeah. restaurants, bars, so lots of flyers and, and that type of thing. So. That side of the business is pretty slow at the moment, obviously. But and now on to Team Sport next door, also on Allied Way. We were particularly interested to see how they were coping with hygiene during the Rona. Um, well, I've been working here for a few months. Um, it's been really fun. Like in the morning, you turn out, you do some cart tests, make sure the carts are clean, they're working, log some problems that are going on with the go-karts, and yeah, and then you get the customers come in, which are really friendly. Yeah. You know, we start. We try and keep the two meter apart rule yep. at the moment, and we've like separated most of the chairs in the briefing room. Some people would like to sit close to each other. You know, if they're in their own bubble, it's fine. And yeah, we've minimised it to nine people at the moment instead of twelve. And yeah, it's just great to work here. Huh. Spectators can come here and watch them go down the ramp. Hopefully not crash. People just really wanted to like come back because I was worried that maybe we won't be so full. But actually, it's so many lovely people coming over. So yeah. that's really good. Really good to hear. So you, you're going to show us a little around a little bit. Yeah. Lovely. So I'll show you guys the ozone machine. Uh huh. It's here, and yep. we put the sticker on ozone sanitized. Gloves have been ozone sanitized. Helmets as well. So if you have a look at that. That's very high tech. Yeah. So it's what safe. it does, it turns oxygen into disinfectant and it actually kills DNA. Yeah, so, so don't get any on you. <laughs> yeah, so what we do is just put some helmets in here. There we go. Close the door. Put it on a program settings, so if you want, and then we start it. 
Um, I take it this, you didn't have this machine before no. the pandemic, so this is something yeah. that you've had to invest in. Oh geez, that's oh. like a dog whistle. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we we had to invest into it recently, but honestly, like, don't it's see good. why we couldn't have it. It's, and like, good it's practice, very useful. I suppose. Good practice anyway, because even if uh, even after this um, pandemic goes away, there's always going to be other illnesses, and that way. And so much easier than the dry cleaner. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, and especially with people using helmets being yeah. reused, like it's really, really good. I think they've been bought, bought, so That's they'll great. be here forever. But yeah, you can't open the machine until it's done sanitizing That's as well. Great. The only way I know you can emergency stop it is by getting the app and connecting to the Wi-Fi. Fantastic. Yeah. We'd like to stress how very impressed we were with our experience at Team Sport. The company has taken its customers' health extremely seriously and we hope that the ozone machines stay in place after this madness is all over. On the Rona meter, Love Your London awards Team Sport Acton... Five Ronettes, the best mark possible. So unfortunately we can't, you know, no. put your things on a locker. No. Due to COVID. To but uh, yeah, that's why people will get changed. Hopefully they don't get naked. They just, you know, put the suit on over their clothes. Yep. There's always mistakes happening every now and then. Hence the ozone machine. Thank you for choosing Team Sport today. Have fun and I hope to see you again soon. He makes this stuff look good. Uh, take your take glasses. Off, off yeah. Okay. Can't see without. Them. You're gonna put them back on. <laughs> He's gonna be sweating like a farm animal in that thing. <laughs> oh boy. That's yeah. It's a good thing there's no one else out there with you, Tristan. Hey. Who's a pretty boy then? Nuh -uh. How's that? <laughs> no, that's not going to work. Okay. It has to be a non-branded right. moment. <laughs> okay, right. buddy. Yeah, let's get started. Wait, wait, but it's not recording sound. No, because you're not wearing the microphone. You said you're not using sound. Have, have you got the other? Have you got no, the Tristan, I left it in Timbuktu. It's in my pocket. Keep going. Okay. Stop fussing. Pay attention to the, the directions. Pay attention to your driving. I'll handle everything else. And I'll just do this, I'll do this mic as well. Um, <laughs> use the pocket? Yes. Okay, ready. Use the pocket. Use the pocket. Yeah, yeah we've got some uh, soap there as well if anybody needs it. Yeah, be careful with those dreads. Man, they're getting long enough. You get that in there and you'll end up... Well, yeah, see if you can put it in your suit. Yeah, maybe like uh, oh, okay. what I'll do is yeah. try and tuck that in while I'm okay. No, it's not. That's just a, that's just gonna end in tears. No, 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 no. There you go. Stuff that in there. There. Okay. Now it's got. He's got the whole awesome. hunchback thing going on there. Good stuff. All right. If you just get seated. Do you go up to 40 miles per hour? Yeah, that's enough to break your yeah, neck. Yeah, I'm just going to go slowly because I can always speed it up. <laughs> yeah. in the 40 miles an hour, yeah, man. If only we had these to tool around in Acton. Pretty cool, Tristan. Yeah. You got funny. the pl place to yourself. So, we'll just wait for the, the command. Mind the lights and control. Control is Can number one. This? Sure. Oh, no, it's fantastic. So 40 miles an hour these things can go. It's just me on my that's own. That's pushing 60, and that's enough to really do some damage, so don't break anything. Okay. Oh, oh. ease her out. There we go. Squeaky, squeaky. Very, very squeaky. Sure. You get used to it after Oh, that it's loud, though. Boy, your ears are ringing if they really get going on those. Nice. There it goes. He's gonna go down underneath. Woohoo! There it is. Well kitted, this place. Yeah. There we go. Just gonna go around. Disappears for a sec. There he comes again. And around. Oh, oh he's, perfect! He nice. saw the light and he stopped. And now we're gonna go All back right. to the yellow. Where's the signal? Yep. I think he's got it. There That's he is. it. Crawling and on. going green. 
There we are. You should be able to. There it is. There it is. There it is. Zing. So how many are allowed on the track at once, on a good day in normal circumstances? Uh, usually 12. 12? Yeah, okay, 12. that's enough to keep your eyes open. Uh, yeah, you're out marshalling cars. Get, get up. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Woohoo! I can show you uh, other points of shots if you like. Sure, if you want, if you, if that's uh, hey, we've got you time. Can keep, if, if you get around, we can go to the middle. All right. Where to go? There it comes. All right. Woohoo! Hey. Yay! All right. Well, you yeah. Today we're so Yeah, that's it. Good stuff. All right. Then he makes his way around. Probably getting a lot more confident now. Sure. And we have traffic. Hey. Woo -hoo. Yeah. All right. Just in time. Yeah. All right. Yeah, yeah sure. Yeah. Lots of spraying out, spraying stuff. Compressed at all. That's where that smell is coming from. Yeah. Yeah. Nicely done. Oh. That's it. There you go. Oh. <sighs> <Great>. <sighs> All right. I'm gonna just I'm gonna pause for a sec. No, no, keep it. I'm gonna get a medal, aren't I? Oh, you're gonna get a medal. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. gosh. <laughs> well, I can't miss that. That's one of one. You're, so, you're hitting. Run. He hit the ceiling. You're hitting the ceiling there, White. You're clicking. <laughs> well, mind their camera. I won. You did. Checkered flag. Look at that. <laughs> you oh. wanna go? How how are we gonna do this? Well, that's like that's that? fine. That's fine. Oh, we go on the helmet. We need the helmet off. Oh, okay. okay. Hey, where's the champagne? Uh. We'll have that after. <laughs> He's driven. There's no more driving today, so. There we go. We got our winner. Hey! Woohoo! Look at Woo. that! Too easy! Oh! What was my fastest lap? Did it say? Uh, I wasn't really racing too fast. I think it was 27. Okay, let's uh. Seconds. What's the. Um, is that is that average? Let's see if it'll come up. Yeah. It was quite good considering these ones were like 34. Best lap times, 36. Yeah, so you did good. Great! Yeah. Fantastic! Thank you! Okay, so this is uh, North Acton Cemetery or or uh, Acton Cemetery for short. Uh, these are the Park Royal Gates. Really interesting place. I'm going to show you the grave of a daredevil aviator in a minute. But first of all, as we've come through this gate, apparently my relative, my great great uncle uh, and, uh, and other relatives of mine are just here on the left. So I know this isn't who do you think you are, but until they commission a new series, this is the best you're going to get. 
According to my notes, my great-great-uncle was buried here in 1928 in an area marked C, which, according to the map, was near the gates. As well as being a mineral water magnet, he was also, judging from his robe, cassock and ceremonial staff, a lay preacher, probably from the church inside this very cemetery. The church was closed, unfortunately. I was hoping that the staff might have still been in use and on display. Anyhow, we spent the next hour looking everywhere. We gave up, and we headed to the posh part of the cemetery to continue our filming, when... I really got to thank Sharon here, because she found I was going to give up. I looked everywhere. We found it. We found... Here we are. This is my family plot. Or well, my, my great... This is my great, great uh, uncle, uh, who ran the DMWS uh, Diet Mineral Water Supply. Um, Harry Joseph Hicks. Husband to Emma Jane, um, and also Victoria Ivy, that was her, their young daughter who died when she was only 16. And next to them, we have the grave of John William Fergus, who, together with Hicks, also the run, running DMWS. Now, uh, just opposite, well, first of all, there, there, I'll, have to, I'll have to double check. There's a, there's a pit over here, um, Edward Richard Pit, but I'm not sure if that's the same pit. I'll have to double check who uh, who ran WM, WM, DMWS with Ferguson Hicks. Um, but anyway, but this over here is the other thing I wanted to show you. I mean, this is this is really the best area of the cemetery, to be honest, um, because this is where also right opposite is buried George Lee Temple. Now, George Lee Temple is an, a very, very brave man. He was one of the biggest ad ad adrenaline junkin junkies of his time. And he was born in Acton, as you can see, in 1892. He was also a really good motorcyclist by the time he, he qualified as a pilot in 1913, at the age of just 20. Um, and he bought himself that uh, year uh, one, uh, a 50 horsepower Blerio motorplane. Um, and he became the very first person to fly upside down in the UK. And this plane, of course, is completely unsuited for this practice. He managed a loop to loop. Uh, he almost died in the process because he misjudged how high he should go. Uh, in October uh, 1913, he became the youngest person to fly from Paris to London. And then on the 25th of January 1914, shortly before the, the First World War, unfortunately, he, I, I believe he had pneumonia. Um, and he collapsed uh, on the wheel, or whatever it is that planes have got, um, handle, um, and that's what they think must have happened, and he died, he crashed. So, really young, he was aged just 21. He only just learnt how to fly in Hendon. Um, yes, yeah, so, so uh, one interesting thing um, that uh, it says on the temple, on George Lee Temple's uh, graves, is the family motto, uh, which is Templa Quam Dilecta, which means literally, how lovely are thy temples? But obviously it's a play on words because he's a temple as well, George Lee Temple. So it's a little funny sort of, that's, a, that's the family motto. But yes, right opposite my great, great uncle. Now I am looking for Reuben Hicks. Reuben Hicks I don't know where he is, but apparently he's not buried, he's buried in another area. Well, Reuben Hicks was his son, which would make him my first cousin twice removed. First cousin twice removed is the son of nope, my great great that's uncle. It. Our viewers have been patient enough watching you go karting and looking for your great great uncle. They really don't give two hoots about looking for the grave of your first cousin twice removed. I'm out of here. Hang on, wait for me! In the next and final instalment about Acton, we'll be checking out where another musical legend spent his school years. Reach out and touch faith. We'll be talking about Wormwood Scrubs, discovering a treasure trove, and much, much more. 
see you then. From Acton Town to Wimbledon, from Brixton to beyond. Love your London. Have a banana.